This is the place where robots meet. Look. You can see them here as slaves to logic. And this man on the hill comes to free them. Do you know who he is? So I want to emphasize the, the purpose of Neuralink. Like, uh, what do we, what's our goal? Our goal is to solve important spine and brain problems with a seamlessly implanted device. So you want to have a device that you can basically put in your head and feel and look totally normal, but it solves some important problem in your brain or spine. And the reality is that almost everyone over time will develop brain and spine problems. These range from minor to very severe, but if you live long enough, everyone's gonna basically have some kind of neurological disorder, from memory loss to brain damage. But the thing that's important to appreciate is that an implantable device can actually solve these problems. I think a lot of people don't quite realize that, but all of your senses, your sight, hearing, feeling, pain, these are all electrical signals sent by neurons to your brain. And if you can correct these signals, you can solve everything from memory loss, blindness, paralysis, depression, insomnia, extreme pain, seizures, anxiety, addiction, strokes, brain damage. But these can all be solved with an implantable neural link. In the short term, Neuralink's BMI may be used to fix neurological problems and disorders. As Elon Musk has pointed out, over time, virtually everyone who gets old will suffer at least one, if not multiple, common neurological issues, such as memory loss, hearing loss, seizures, strokes, and brain damage, etc. With the development of Neuralink's device, these problems may be a thing of the past. Better yet, the integration of Neuralink's device with the human brain may advertently solve the artificial intelligence alignment problem by achieving a symbiotic relationship between humans and machines. This is because there are many cases where an AI and a biological intelligence could benefit from each other's actions. The AI receiving data from the human brain and the human brain receiving data from the AI. The benefit of this relationship would greatly outweigh the costs to both humans and AI systems. However, it is also very likely that AI systems and biological intelligences will at some point be in conflict. I think the, the first bit of advice would be to really pay close attention to the development of artificial intelligence. We need to just be very careful in how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that researchers don't get carried away. Because sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. So I think it's important for public safety that we, you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a danger to the public. Elon Musk has commented on the dangers of AI, saying it is the greatest risk we face as a civilization. However, in order to prove that Neuralink can solve this problem, two things will need to become clear. How does Neuralink achieve symbiosis with the human brain? And what are the side effects and potential drawbacks of this symbiosis? One possible downside would be that humans would lose their sense of individuality if we all interconnect our thoughts and ideas into the cloud. However, if we can continue to retain our individuality and use Neuralink in a productive way, the benefits far outweigh the potential risks. Worth mentioning is Neuralink's recent development of a device which connects people's brainwaves to computers to allow them to control machinery with their thoughts alone. The device is able to read from and write to neural synapses in a person's brain using very fine needle-like electrodes that penetrate a person's cranium. This technology, already in use on animals, requires no evasive surgery. Advanced versions of such devices inserted into the brains of quadriplegics and those suffering from brain trauma and other ailments that prevent them from moving their physical body could allow them to restore, if not enhance, the physical capabilities of the human body. We've simplified this to simply something that is about the size of a large coin and it goes in your skull, replaces a piece of skull, and the wires then connect within a few centimeters or about an inch away from the device. And this is sort of what it looks like. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. 
current prototype, version 0.9, has about a thousand channels and it's a 23 millimeters by eight millimeters. In terms of getting a link, you need to have the device, you need to have a great robot that puts in the, the electrodes and uh, does the surgery. So you want the surgery to be as automated as possible and the only way you can achieve the level of precision that's needed is with an advanced robot. The human race is advancing towards a great merging with the technology it has created. And as our technology grows, we will have to confront the questions that arise from our merging with it, not just of how to create it, but of how to control it, and what heights we might achieve through this process. For the first time, there is a real possibility of extending our individual mental capabilities in a manner that goes beyond physical and biological constraints. The goal of Neuralink is to help achieve this vision, to come up with a neural lace that's doing something beyond what we are doing right now in a major way. One of the main long-term goals of Neuralink is to help humans keep with the upcoming rapid technological advancements. By significantly extending the natural capabilities of the human brain, we will possibly create a global neural network of minds. This will allow us to either create or enhance a collective consciousness, an interconnected group of minds working together to solve the problems of humanity in the face of rapid technological advancements. Thus far, it seems, the merging solution for the AI control problem is the best option for humanity to make it into the next century. An additional argument for the merging option is that the control problem might take a long time to satisfactorily solve and some preliminary work needs to be started as soon as possible, but also because of the possibility of a sudden intelligence explosion from subhuman to superhuman AI in which case there might not be any substantial or unambiguous warning before a superintelligence arrives. In addition, it is possible that insights gained from the control problem could in the future end up suggesting that some systems for artificial general intelligence are more predictable and amenable to control than other systems, which in turn could helpfully nudge early AGI research towards the direction of the more controllable AI. Proposed approaches to the control problem include the creation of friendly AI, as Nick Bostrom states, the best strategy to assure ourselves that an AI remains friendly may be to endow it with interests similar to ours. If this strategy is successful, it will have the additional benefits of directing the first superintelligent system towards objectives that humans value. In other words, the control problem may be easier to solve if the superintelligent system is designed so that it wants what humans want, which is also known as the value alignment problem. The thing that's going to be tricky here is that it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon, the on-ramp to serious AI. The danger is going to be more humans using it against each other, I think, most likely. From a long-term existential standpoint, that's like the purpose of Neuralink, is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. I think best case scenario, we effectively merge with AI, where AI serves as a tertiary cognition layer, where we've got the limbic system, primitive brain essentially, we've got the cortex. If we can do have a third layer, which is the AI extension of yourself, that is also symbiotic. And there's enough bandwidth between the cortex and the AI extension of yourself, such that the AI doesn't de facto separate. That could be a good outcome that could be quite a positive outcome for the future. An AI system that has already surpassed a human level of intelligence might well deliberately hide the moment at which it becomes super intelligent in order to try to avoid any attempts to shut it down. However, once an AI has fully matched and then surpassed human intelligence, it will be difficult for it to hide it for long, especially if it is openly interacting with humans. And while it is possible that humanity will never know what causes an AI system to suddenly become super intelligent, it is possible that with foresight and an appropriate level of caution, this occurrence could be predicted and even controlled. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications to never miss videos like this.